Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing well. So this should be the start of my very first read-along reading vlog. I've decided kind of last minute to participate in the Finish-a-thon, which is being hosted by Tea Books in Tasman. The goal for this read-along is basically for this week, which is the 27th of July to the 2nd of August, to try and get round to some of the books that you have neglected for some reason. Maybe you've got part way through them and you've just not finished them, or maybe books that you've been really planning to read for a very long time, but for whatever reason you've just not gotten around to. I think this readathon is a brilliant way to really cool down your TBR pile and to get around to some of the books that you've really been putting off for quite a while. If you've been watching my videos then you'll probably know that I've been trying to get through the last of my pre-lockdown TBR books. That was a really big goal for July and I'm pleased to say that I have managed to get to most of those books now. The main two books that I have left over are A Fine Balance by Rahinta Mystery and War and Peace by Leah Tolstoy. So I did want to kind of make it my mission to make a dent in these books. I've also been participating in Middlemarch Along, which is uh, Claire Fenby's read along where we are reading Middlemarch by George Eliot. And as you can see, I am right near the end of this. So I'd really like to finish it uh, today if possible, but uh, maybe in the next couple of days at least. So as you can see, this is quite a, a chunky little TBR. Now I'll be honest with you. Um, I think Middlemarch obviously should be very, very doable. I've got less than a hundred pages left to read of this. Um, however, you know, these are these are quite chunky, chunky boys still to read. And to be honest with you, uh, War and Peace is a book that I don't think um, I will be attempting to make a lot of headway in, but I would like to make a decent start in this. I think the real goal is to try and finish A Fine Balance. This will be the real goal for this week. And I did start it, I'm about, well, I'm only eight or nine pages in, uh, and I've been enjoying those eight or nine pages, so hopefully this will be, this will be a good one. And if that's not enough, in the spirit of the finish-a-thon, I also have uh, a few history magazines that I have been neglecting. I have a really, really bad habit with my history magazines of letting them pile up. I tend to read like the first couple of articles when it comes through my door and then I put it by my bed thinking yeah I'll read a bit before I go to sleep each night and I never do I'm always too tired so yeah I've had a little accumulation pile of history magazine so I'd like to <laughs> make some progress in these and finish at least one or two of them so yes this is my potentially ambitious uh, TBR for finishathon we have finish middle March hopefully read all of a fine balance make decent headway in War and Peace and then try and read at least two of these magazines, if not all of them. Whoa! Oh dear. <laughs> So different day, same dress, who cares, we're in lockdown, it's fine. So I didn't check in yesterday to let you know my progress, um, but as you probably will be able to gather from the clips from last night, I did manage to finish Middle March by George Eliot. Yay! I'm really glad I have managed to get this done in July. I know Claire Femby did say that she was extending Middle March along uh, to the end of August, so if you are interested in picking up Middle March and joining in in the read along, then you've still got time. There's still plenty of time to read this. Um, but I'm really, really glad that I did manage to finish it in July as planned. Yeah, I quite enjoyed this. Um, I I'd probably say this is around about a four star, so not one of my favourite classics that I've ever read, but I'm really, really glad that I did read it, and I can definitely see why so many people say that it is a masterpiece. But I'll give you some more detailed thoughts in my wrap up for July. Last night I also managed to read a couple more articles in one of my history magazines, so that's nice. I'm making progress here. Um, maybe, possibly, try and see if I can finish this one today. This is the July issue of BBC History. <laughs> not that you can get this, I don't think, but uh, 
hey, <laughs> but I think the real goal for today will be to try and get a little bit of a headway in a fine balance. Today's gonna be quite a quiet day. I'm actually on my own um, at the moment. So, you know, do a bit of reading, do a bit of uh, job applying, yay. And uh, because we're at home on our own, what else are you gonna do but have a bit of a musical theater, Disney medley sing-along? What else can you do, I ask you? <laughs> Do I enjoy that I have to wear a sun hat when I'm in the conservatory because I'm just too, too pale for this? <laughs> actually the next day. I didn't really want to bore you um, with just lots and lots of different clips of me reading or not reading as the case seems to be. Um, <laughs> it's not been the most productive couple of days of reading. Um, I've read this much of a fine balance about it's 73 pages uh, I have read so far, so not that much. Um, I did manage to finish one of my history magazines, so yay. Uh, so on to the next one. This is the June edition because for some reason I'd started July but not June. Don't know how that works. Last couple of days I've gone down a little bit of a Glee season one rewatch rabbit hole after seeing Hamilton and trying to explain to my mum who Jonathan Groff was because she was like oh I think I know who he is I th I'm sure I've seen him in something before and I was like yeah you've seen him in Glee um and so we watched uh the last episode of season one which is where Vocal Adrenaline do Bohemian Rhapsody which I think is the most iconic moment in all of Glee we watched that episode just to see that number and then I was like I think I need to rewatch season one of Glee. It's really funny rewatching it as an adult because I swear, like I used to watch Glee and take it so, so seriously when I was a teenager. I think because it was the first thing that I'd ever seen um, where like musical theater especially was like very prominent in like a mainstream show, but I took it so seriously. I watched it so straight. Whereas I'm watching it now as an adult and I'm recognizing like how much of it is a parody. Like I don't think I recognized that it was a parody of high school rather than like being very, very serious. I took it so seriously. There's nothing ironic about show choir. I also spent a little bit of time this afternoon re-watching uh, the Felicity Jones uh, Northanger Abbey, which is just such a cute little adaptation of that film. So yeah, that's where my brain has been rather than reading, but it, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, we're only on Wednesday, I've got every faith that I can read this. <gasps> a. <laughs> Hello kids, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and We've made a little bit of progress. We are now 150 pages into a fine balance. So, you know, we're not halfway through yet. We're probably about a quarter way through, but it's fine. We're, 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 doing, we're doing fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's been interesting so far. We're now into a different kind of section of the book uh, where we are focusing on different characters. And I think possibly um, I preferred the first section a bit more to the second. I think I'm starting to notice that I seem to have a bit of a bias towards uh, city kind of focused narratives than more rural kind of villagey narratives. And I wonder if that's why I'm getting a little bit bored with it. I don't know, does anybody else have that where you're much more engaged in certain settings than you are in others? Like your brain will just turn off uh, when you're introduced to a particular setting. Cause I've noticed that. I've noticed cause I've had a few um, books recently that have been set more in like the countryside in more rural or more villagey kind of settings and for whatever reason that just does not do it for me I much prefer cities or universities schools as settings I don't know why I feel like that's just such a strange thing to have a bias with I will say for this book though it has managed to have some like big emotional beats that have hit for me so within the first 50 pages something happened where I was just like no and now we're at page 150 
and another thing has happened. Like, like the book has taken a bit of a grisly turn in this new perspective. So that that has finally caught my attention, I think. And hopefully it's gonna start to ramp up a bit more from there on. What else has happened that I can update you with? Oh yeah, and whilst I've been doing this read along, whilst I've been doing the reading vlog, uh, the long list for the book prize was announced and The Mirror and the Light is on the long list as we all predicted it would. And I think possibly me and Kieran are going to be doing uh, like a little buddy read collaboration video on the mirror and the light because I that's the one that I'm still the most interested in I've only read one of a book on this long list but that's still the one that I'm like it's my winner it's my winner which is so biased and silly but meh. But I had been kind of looking for any excuse to reread that book, so I'm quite happy to do that. I always feel like with the Booker Prize, I only start to get excited once the shortlist is announced, once I'm absolutely scandalized that a book that I thought was gonna be on the list was not on the list. I don't know, at the moment, none of the other books are really grabbing me, but I, I don't know, That's that. I think it's just because I am very, very biased towards Hilary Mantel right now. I think as I see more and more people reading them and talking about them, reviewing them, I'll pro my interest will probably start to pick up. And as soon as we get to the shortlist, I think I'll get more intrigued. I think it's when you've got like 12 or 13 books on a list, I'm just initially like, oh, that's a lot. And especially because it's literary fiction, which is not my normal genre. Um, yeah, I, I'll probably need a bit more time until I'm getting really, truly excited about the list. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how things have been so far. Um, I hope you're all uh, enjoying uh, doing finish a -thon yourselves if you are participating. I felt myself trying to finish this and being like, let me know what you're reading and have a great day. See you later, bye. This isn't how this video is gonna go. Like this is gonna continue. What am I doing? What am I doing? Ignore all of the mess here. I've just filmed a video, but I'm just about to go outside to do a little bit more reading. But I did wanna pop in and say that I got a new dress. It's got stars on it. I did a little sneaky Depop order uh, following my Joni clothing uh, haul from the other week. And yeah, um, somebody was selling this secondhand on Depop. It's, a, it's an older design from Joni clothing, which I'd seen uh, them selling last year. And it was one of the dresses that I really wanted to pick up and never did, because I was just a bit weird about online ordering. But now that I know what my size is in Joni clothing and I know how they fit, um, yeah, I picked it up and it, I think it fits really well. Um, I have a few other journey clothing purchases that I made since that haul as well, which I might chuck in here as well. <laughs> We've got this dress. which I think looks ever so slightly nursey, but it's fine, it's fine. Um, it was like 12 pounds in the sale, so I'm quite pleased with this. This one has bikes on it. Yay. And then this jumper, which I'm not gonna try on now because it is much, much too hot today for that. <laughs> Moral of the story is I need to stop buying clothes. What calm, relaxing sounds to be reading to on a nice summer day. Happy Saturday. If you ever wanted to know what my hair looks like when I've just woken up, this is it. So we've got two days left of the finish-a-thon and I've still got more than half of a fine balance still to read. So that's really gonna be my uh, task for this weekend. Um, and also to try and get one more history magazine done. Can we do it? Fingers crossed, let's see. Guys, a moment for the fact that we did it. We're past halfway. I'm about 66% through, so. We might get this book read this weekend. Woo! It's very, very warm today. It doesn't really look it from outside. It looks quite cloudy, but it's warm. And all I really want to do is read. So I've got the perfect excuse to keep going. <laughs>
I just came back from my walk and I did a quick little trip into Asda, of course, with my mask on, don't worry, but I picked up a couple of books whilst I was there and I thought you might be interested in seeing what I got. You know, it was one book for 4 50 or two books for £8. What was I meant to do? Like, what was I meant to do? Firstly, I picked up Expectation by Anna Hope. This is a book that I've seen so many people talking about uh, in the past year or so. So with it coming into paperback, I thought, you know, the time is now. Hannah, Kate and Lissa are young, vibrant and inseparable. Their shared world is ablaze with art and activism, romance and revelry, and the promise of everything to come. They are electric. They are the best of friends. Ten years on, they are not where they had hoped to be. Amidst flailing careers and faltering relationship, each craves what the others have, and each grapples with the same question. What does it take to lead a meaningful life? Expectation is a story of the highs and lows of friendship. It's about finding your way as a mother, a daughter, a wife, a rebel. Most of all, it explores that liminal space between expectation and reality in which we all live our lives. Most importantly, and unexpectedly, I found this. <laughs> This is Wife After Wife by Olivia Layfield, which is a modern reimagining, retelling of Henry VIII and his six wives. <laughs> you see why I had to buy this, right? This basically reimagines Henry VIII um, as a wealthy businessman who somehow inexplicably goes through six wives. Divorced, murdered, died, divorced, departed, survived. <laughs> and I was just like, that sounds like absolute trash. I want it. I'd seen the Amazon preview for it, which includes the cast of characters. <laughs> They are absolutely ridiculous. But I think my absolute favourite is the Anne of Cleves uh, analogy, which is Anki from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> you also have uh, Catherine Howard, who is Caitlin Howe, uh, Jim Bunny and Wildchild, a fan of the Kardashians, raised by her grandmother in a crumbling manor with other families of ageing hippies, a stranger to fidelity. Uh, Catherine of Aragon is Katie Paragon, classy, gentle, saintly, loved by all, a devout Catholic, wants many babies. <laughs> and I was just like, I want to read this so badly. I feel like this is either going to be the best thing that I've ever read or the absolute worst. There is no in between here. However, enough fun. <laughs> Back to my actual reading. <laughs> Happy last day at the readathon, everybody. I hope you've all been making good progress. Um, we've just come back from my sister's house. We've just been feeding her cats and yeah, just got to get on with reading. I've got about a hundred pages left of the fine balance. I've still got three of my history magazines still to read and I've completely given up on the idea of uh, making a dent in War and Peace, but it's fine, it's fine. Um, I've just uploaded a video to go live at seven. So um, hopefully you'll have seen that by the time this comes out. So, fingers crossed, let's uh, see how we go. So guys, guess what? I finished the book, yay! I feel like it was a little bit touch and go as to whether or not I was gonna finish this in time, but we've done it, yay! And my goodness, was the ending to this book bleak. I mean, the entire book was bleak, but the ending, whew. I think it's probably gonna take me a few days to kind of get my thoughts together on how much I enjoyed this book because I don't know if enjoy is quite the right word. I'm really glad I have read it, but ooh, bleak, bleak, bleak. Now all that remains to be seen is whether or not I'm gonna be able to finish this magazine. I felt the rhyme coming on. I know that's really pathetic, but <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Hi everybody, I just realised whilst filming another video that I hadn't checked in with you to let you know how I finished the week up. Uh, but yes, it is Monday now, which means that it is the end of the Finish the Thorn reading read along. So how did I do last night? Uh, well, I can officially tell you that I managed to finish one more of my history magazines, so yay. So where does that leave our progress overall for the goals I had set at the beginning of the week? Well, I finished Middlemarch by George Eliot. As I said, there was only about 80 pages left, so that wasn't too hard to do. I managed to complete the whole of A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery, which yay, because this was quite a chunky book. And I managed to read two of the four history magazines that I had set myself to read. So three goals basically were accomplished there. I didn't manage to read the other two magazines that I had set for myself, but it's fine. I've at least made progress and I've made a dent in these magazines. Um, and I didn't manage to make a very good start on War and Peace. I'm where I was basically at the beginning of last week, which is 20 pages in. Um, but 
it's fine. I'm just really quite impressed that I was able to read a fine balance this week. So I'm, I'm good, I'm cool. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of the reading vlog for this week. I'm really pleased with what I was able to do, even though I didn't manage to hit all of my goals. Uh, do let me know if you were participating in finish -a -thon. Did you manage to get through all of your goals? Just let me know, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're all having a fantastic, fantastic day and look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, bye.